Surrounded by hills, downtown Stuttgart can be very hot in the summer, and many mid-range and budget hotels have no air conditioning. An excellent U-Bahn and tram system makes getting around easy from any location, so hotels on the hills can be more comfortable after a summer day's sightseeing. Although Stuttgart, capital of the state of Baden-Württemberg in southern Germany, is widely known as a leading commercial center and home of two major automobile manufacturers, it is also one of Germany's most appealing cities for tourists. A pair of outstanding art museums, two state-of-the-art automobile museums, one of Europe's top zoos, sumptuous palaces, and one of Germany's largest Christmas markets draw visitors year-round. Architectural landmarks represent Baroque, Art Nouveau, Modernist, and Contemporary styles. Stuttgart sits in a bowl-like terrain almost completely surrounded by steep hills that are covered in forests and vines. The green that frames the city spills into broad parks and gardens that give its center a spacious feel. A city is easy for tourists to reach and to tour. The excellent S-Bahn system is easy to use and connects the city center to the airport and outlying attractions. Stuttgart's main train station is a five-minute walk from the Schlossplatz, around which you'll find several of the city's major tourist attractions and its main shopping streets. Discover the best places to visit with our video of the top tourist attractions and things to do in and around Stuttgart. Number 1. Schlossplatz The expansive Schlossplatz is the focal point of the city. Surrounded by buildings dating from Stuttgart's past as a ducal and royal capital, this vast open space is well used. Its green lawns and benches are popular places to catch some sun, and its gardens are pleasant places to stroll in good weather. In November, the square becomes a children's Christmas market, with a miniature village, holiday rides, and a skating rink. The Jubilee Column, erected at its center in 1841, commemorates King William I, 25 years of rule. Here, too, you'll find a cast iron bandstand, a fountain, and pieces of modern sculpture by Calder, Herlicka, and Hajek. Dominating one side of the Schlossplatz is the massive New Schloss or New Palace. Built in late Baroque style and completed in 1807, the palace, once home to former kings, is now used by the state government. Number 2. Ludwigsburg Palace The vast and lavishly decorated Ludwigsburg Palace is one of Germany's largest and loveliest Baroque palaces. In decorating his private apartments here, Duke Karl Eugen of Württemberg spared no expense, commissioning the great fresco painter Mathaus Gunther to decorate the walls and papering even dressing rooms with hand-painted wall coverings. A highlight is the grand marble hall, with magnificent chandeliers and its ceiling fresco of clouds against blue giving the impression of open sky. The oldest preserved palace theater in Europe, a gallery confection built for the Duke in 1757, still has its original stage machinery, with a collection of rare 18th and 19th century stage sets. The theater museum shows some of the ingenious mechanisms for moving these and for creating the illusions of thunder, rain, and wind. Ludwigsburg offers a number of things to see and do. In addition to touring the apartments and theater museum, there are magnificent gardens to explore and the beautiful Baroque Marktplatz. In December, this is the scene of a Baroque Christmas market, and in the autumn, the palace grounds host a popular pumpkin festival. Number 3. Killesburg Park and Tower Originally laid out in 1939 as part of a major horticultural show, Killsburg Park is a lovely 123-acre open space offering visitors several things to do. Many of its structures date back to its opening and are still used for flower shows and events, but the most recent attraction is the unusual Killsburg Tower. This 40-meter-tall cone-shaped observation tower is made of metal stairs that spiral upwards on steel cables. Its open-air construction can be a bit unnerving, as can the slight swaying feeling on the uppermost of the observation platforms. For a closer-to-the-ground experience, tour the park on the narrow-gauge Killsburg Railway. Both diesel and steam locomotives pull cars through the grounds. Departures are frequent, so you can wait for a steam run. If you are visiting Stuttgart in July, be sure to visit Lichterfest Stuttgart, a festival during which thousands of lanterns decorate the park. Number 4. Solitude Palace Located on a scenic vantage point a few miles outside of Stuttgart's city center, Solitude Palace was constructed for Duke Karl Eugen in 1763 as a hunting lodge and summer residence. Designed in the late Rococo and early neoclassical styles, the most sumptuously decorated rooms are in the central pavilion. Its highlight is the radiant white hall with its lovely domed roof, intricate decorative gold work, and frescoed ceiling. Outside, you can stroll through the manicured grounds and along the Solitude Alley, a broad tree-lined avenue commissioned by Duke Karl Eugen, which extends for more than 13 kilometers between Solitude Palace and the Palace at Ludwigsburg. Number 5. The Mercedes-Benz Museum Stuttgart can trace its long love affair with the automobile back as far as 1887, 
when Gottlieb Daimler and Wilhelm Maybach set up shop here. The Mercedes-Benz Museum celebrates that more than 130 years of automotive history and over 1,500 exhibits that cover nine floors and put the invention and development of the automobile into the context of each era's technology, daily life, and society. At the heart of the exhibits are 160 vehicles, some of the first ever built auto racing legends and prototype cars of the future. Among the cars is the world's first motorcycle, a Daimler, from 1885, which bears almost no resemblance to today's except that it has two large wheels. You don't need to be car crazy to have a good time here. But for automobile lovers, this and the Porsche Museum are the two best museums in Stuttgart. Number 6. The Porsche Museum The dynamic architecture of the building De Lieven Meisel designed for the Porsche Museum, supported on a trio of V-shaped columns, is intended to portray the nature of the brand itself. Inside, you can follow the development of Porsche vehicles through exhibits and the 80-plus vehicles on display. Audio guides and English highlight themes, such as the Porsche DNA that lives on in every model since the first. The most popular part of the museum, even for those with little interest in automobiles and racing, is the interactive 12-meter Porsche touchwall, where you can use touch frames to browse through more than 3,000 drawings, photos, posters, and advertisements from the vast historical archive. In the interactive Porsche in the mix sound installation unique in the world, you can play sounds of engines, horns, and brakes of various models throughout the years and mix them into an original music track. After composing your own piece of Porsche music, you can send it to yourself via email. Number 7. Fernsetterm Stuttgart The world's first television tower would be interesting enough, but the 217-meter-tall Fernsetterm Stuttgart has the added attraction of an observation deck and restaurant, with sweeping views that reach across the city and Necker Valley into the Swabian countryside, as far as the Black Forest and the Odenwald. The tower opened in 1956 and soon became a prototype for such structures as far away as Johannesburg and Wuhan, China. Stuttgart engineer Fritz Leonhardt proposed the innovative concrete construction, with the suggestion that it could become a tourist attraction, as well as a transmission tower, and it quickly became one of the city's most visited spots. To get here, Take the U7, U8, or U15 subway line, or the number 70 bus to the Rubank stop. Number 8. Esslingen. 11 miles east of Stuttgart, the town of Esslingen feels centuries away. Its position at the point where ancient trade routes crossed the Necker River was strengthened by the building of two bridges early in the medieval era and grew into a major trading center, protected by a hilltop castle, whose ramparts and towers you can explore for lovely views of the old town and Necker below. Down in the old town, you'll feel as though you'd stumbled into the Middle Ages, walking along street after street lined with half-timbered buildings. More than 200 of these remain, dating from the 13th to the 16th centuries. Other highlights are the Church of St. Dionys, with the unusual bridge between its tall towers and the lovely red town hall with its glockenspiel, a clock where moving figures perform. Number 9. The Grauchapel on Wurtemberg Hill Perch high upon the Württemberg overlooking Stuttgart and the Necker Valley is the Grauchapel, the burial chapel of Queen Katharina, erected by King Wilhelm I as a monument to his beloved wife after her premature death in 1819. Contracted between 1820 and 1824, this beautiful structure consists of a domed rotunda in neoclassical style inspired by the Pantheon in Rome. It is considered the most romantic spot in Stuttgart, in part because of its beautiful setting, but mainly because of Wilhelm's inscription above the entrance to the chapel, Love Never Dies, in memory of his lost queen. Number 10. Christmas Market Germany is known for its Christmas markets, and one of the largest and best is in Stuttgart, with more than 280 vendors set up in rustic log cabins, filling Markplatz and Schillerplatz, and lining the streets and squares between them. Each cabin is decorated with evergreen boughs and twinkling lights, and their roofs are topped with elaborate holiday scenes and motifs. There's a lively competition for the prize as each year's best. Vendors display an eye-boggling assortment of beautiful handmade gifts, wooden toys, pottery, intricate ceramic houses, embroidery, puppets, knitted mittens and socks, felted hats, and holiday decorations of all sorts. Food is everywhere. Sizzling sausages, spicy cookies, marzipan, chocolate, and roasting chestnuts. An entire side of Schlossplatz is devoted to children, with a carousel and a Ferris wheel with cars like giant Christmas tree balls. They can ride a miniature train through a doll-sized town, ice skate, or make their own Christmas presents and cookies at kids-only booths. Special events seem to be happening all the time. The colorfully costumed band marches by, and the old castle courtyard rings with a choral concert. The market opens in late November and continues through December 23. Number 11. 
Wilhelma Zoological and Botanic Garden. Today, one of Germany's largest zoos with more than 2 million annual visitors, Wilhelma Zoological and Botanic Garden was created as a private royal retreat for the Swabian King Wilhelm I. The buildings were constructed in the Neo-Moorish style, which was popular among European royalty in the mid-19th century, and set among gardens in a large green park. Among the many things that make this zoo and botanic garden so outstanding is the way the fanciful historic buildings have been repurposed as the setting for animals and plants, and how these two have been integrated. For example, the Moorish villa is now home to a combined animal and plant house, and a pavilion that was once the king's vantage point overlooking the Necker River is now the main entrance. The Belvedere Pavilion above the Subtropics Terraces and the Damascene Hall are still in use, as is the covered walkway lined with decorative terracotta. A state-of-the-art complex for African apes was added in 2013, especially to accommodate the needs of gorillas and bonobos, only two of the nearly 1,200 species represented here. Each of these, as well as the 8,500 plant varieties, is shown in a specific house or enclosure representing its native geography or environment. These include the House for Animals of Prey, the Tropics House, the South America enclosure, and the house for tree ferns. Although it's one of the most popular things to do in Stuttgart with children, this park and zoo is appealing to all ages. Number 12. Altes Schloss and Landes Museum Overlooking one side of Schlossplatz is massive Altes Schloss or Old Castle. There is no trace of its 10th century origins. The existing building with its beautiful courtyard surrounded with multiple arcades was built between 1553 to 78. The impressive structure now houses the Württemberg Landis Museum with its fascinating collections of medieval art, musical instruments, watches and clocks, as well as the magnificent Württemberg royal crown and crown jewels. Especially interesting are the archaeological collections with rare artifacts tracing prehistoric inhabitants of the caves in the Swabian Mountains, including the world's oldest human artworks. Later Celtic, Roman and medieval pieces include rich grave finds of weapons and jewelry. The modern glass collection is among the best in Europe and a superb costume and textile collection focuses on 18th century European decorative fabrics and textiles from the Art Nouveau period. In the south wing is the 16th century palace church, with tombs of famous former residents and royalty. Number 13. Drive the Black Forest High Road One of the most beautiful drives in Germany is along the 44 miles schwarzwald Hochstrasse Black Forest High Road. The route is well named for it climbs along the ridge of the Baden-Baden mountain range, ascending to more than 3,000 meters for spectacular views of the Black Forest Valleys and over the Rhine Valley and the Vosges Mountains in France. The high road begins in Baden-Baden, a 1.25-hour drive from Stuttgart, and follows B500 south to Freudenstadt. Several highlights along the route invite stops. At the glacial lake Mummelsee, you can follow the path around the lake or rent pedalos to explore it from the water. A wilderness path on the Bullerhoe is a popular thing to do for hikers, and the Lothar Path is a fascinating look at how nature recovers from a devastating hurricane. In 1999, Hurricane Lothar felled 40,000 hectares of forests in Baden-Württemberg. The Lothar Trail takes visitors through the area on boardwalks, ladders, stairs, and bridges through and above the damaged woodlands, showing how the forests are regenerating without intervention. All along the route are stopping points and restaurants serving traditional Black Forest dishes. You can return on the same road for a different perspective of the views, or you can choose a route through the eastern part of the Black Forest through a series of charming half-timbered towns. Number 14. Schillerplatz Flanking the old palace is Schillerplatz, an old town square with a monument to Friedrich Schiller, poet, philosopher, historian, and dramatist, one of Germany's most famous cultural giants. The square is the site of a flower market on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday mornings, and in December joins the Schlossplatz and Marktplatz, on either side of Schillerplatz, as home to the Christmas market. One side of the square is formed by the Altkanzli, and on the southwest side is the old Fruchtkassen dating from 1390, and adjoining it, the core of the Stiftskirch. The two unmatched spires of the Stiftskirch, the Collegiate Church, tower above the small remnant of Stuttgart's old town. Founded in the 12th century on the site, an older 10th century church, Stiftskirche was rebuilt in late Gothic style in the 15th century and reconstructed in 1958 after heavy damage in World War II. Highlights include a magnificent series of 16th century Renaissance figures of the Counts of Württemberg, as well as its 17th century burial vaults.